Okay, please take out your chapter 7, section 3 notes. Um, you had some questions on nationalism and then the last question summarizing the Missouri Compromise. And you're going you're gonna to put your notes for this video over here. And I'm going to try, and a couple of requests in class today, to try to really emphasize what it is that you should be writing down. So I'm going to try to do that today. Um, as I'm going through, I'll try to highlight this is what I think you should really have down. And I'll try to use that blue box. It'll probably be underneath me here. Um, or above me, I don't know, depending on where I put it, to, um, to highlight and emphasize some of the uh, important points that, that I think you should have in your notes on that sheet. Um, so here we have our Humpty Dumpty again, and clearly you know, things are not as stable as they were yesterday, and that's where we're heading. You know, yesterday our question was, what united the states? And we're going to continue along that path to see what kind of challenges we're going to start to see posed to that unification and we're going to really focus in on that one factor of unification which was the central government that's with the numbers that we're working with in class yesterday well today and into tomorrow and then we're going to um, you know hopefully some of that will begin to make a little bit more sense after you see some of what we're going to look at today so here is the United States as of 1820 and this is the United States that is you know uh, as it was when you were with when you're looking at that first set of numbers in class and what we're going to look at today is how we got there how did we get to this this situation you know we added we've added some states obviously and how does that happen because how that happens is really going to be important moving forward especially when we look at the Senate numbers and I know in fourth period Nick asked specifically why why do we have to look at the Senate numbers and they they are really important and hopefully that'll make a little bit more sense tomorrow but our goal for tonight is for you to understand two things the difference between a territory and a state there's a huge difference and I'm gonna try really hard to explain it as clearly as I can and then the process of a territory becoming a state and we'll use Missouri as an example and also reveals a problem. So let's start here. Um, and I, I, like I said, I'll highlight for you the things that I think that you should have in your notes. The first thing that I would have in my notes is that in the Constitution, there is no process for adding states to the, to the Union. That doesn't mean we're not going to do it. It's just that the Constitution isn't where we're going to find the information on how this happens. The only place that this exists is in an ordinance that was passed under the Articles of Confederation called the Northwest Ordinance. So here I would, you know, I would emphasize there is no process, and if you want to look for that pro process, you have to look back all the way to this Northwest Ordinance of 1787. What we do know in the Constitution is that the states have representatives in the Congress, and they have their own state powers, like we've talked about in the Tenth Amendment. Territories, okay, that's states. Territories, these are pieces of land that the United States owns, it possesses, but they're not states, so they don't have those Tenth Amendment rights. They don't have state powers. Territories, and this is, you need to have this in your notes, territories are governed by Congress. They are allowed to start a process of governing themselves, but only as Congress allows it. So Congress, the central government, is in charge of territories, and they get to say how much the territory can do, and they get to kind of allow the territory to go through a process to become a state. And so we don't want them to stay territories forever. And so here are those steps that a territory would go through to move towards statehood. So you start as a territory, big piece of land. Congress says you're a territory. Congress governs you, and they start you on this process. The first step is that Congress will appoint a, appoint a governor, and all the rules and all the laws are still established by Congress in Washington, D.C., but then people start moving there. And once people start moving there, the Congress wants to slowly give away some of that control or give some of that control to the people. So once there are 5,000 voters in a territory, they can begin to elect their own territorial legislature. They can start to govern themselves. However, anything that they do or any laws that they pass can be undone by Congress. Congress still has that final say. The third step is when the population reaches 60,000, or if there's a state smaller than 60,000, the population of that state, but let's just stick with 60,000, the territory can have a special constitutional convention. At that constitutional convention, they will write a constitution, and they will then apply to the Congress to become a state. 
the Constitution, the state Constitution that they write, is their application. Congress gets that, and they have the final say. They either accept it or they reject it. A point of emphasis here. If they accept it, once a territory becomes a state, there's no going back. That is, the Congress can't say, oh, we want you to change this or we want you to do this. Once you're a state, you have full powers of statehood. What's important about that is, you know, we have our original 13 states, right? Well, let's say a new state gets added. They aren't a junior state. Once they're a state, they are a state as powerful as the other states that were here from the beginning. There's no, you know, tiered system. A state is a state is a state. There is one catch, though. And that catch is the issue that we really need to start thinking a lot about in class, and that is the issue of slavery. Because Congress governed territories, the Congress would get to decide whether or not slavery was legal in a territory. They don't have any say about it when it becomes a state, but when it's a territory, the Congress gets to decide. So, for example, when they, in 1787, when they created this Northwest Territory, and I'll flip back up to a map here, you know, this area, when they created that, they said in that, in that territory, slavery was not permitted. So in places like Illinois, Wisconsin, Michigan, you couldn't have slaves when they were a territory. It wasn't legal. And what this is likely to mean is when those people got together to write the Constitution, of course, they're going to not have slaves because they don't, they already don't have them. And so in this way, and this is a point of emphasis here, the Congress could try to control where slavery would and would not be by where they allowed it and did not allow it during the territory stages. So they could kind of control it or they, they tried to control it. So in controlling that balance, you know, we know that they organized this territory without slavery they organized this territory with slavery, and then we have this huge chunk of land that, for the most part, wasn't yet organized because people weren't moving there yet. Well, Missouri screws up everything. Missouri was not an organized territory, so that means that the Congress hadn't made any rules about it. But people flooded Missouri all of a sudden, and suddenly they had all the population requirements, and they wanted to become a state. Well, they wanted to be a slave state. The problem with that is, and this is where we're really going to get into those numbers tomorrow, is that this would have thrown off the balance. And the slave states, they get angry because northerners were like, no, that can't happen. We don't want there to be more slave states than there are free states. And so they started to try to block Missouri. You know, the question that we had to answer as a country was, were we going to allow slavery to simply grow with the country? Is that a part of our future? As we move west, does slavery move west? And boy, that's an issue that is going to be difficult to be uniting. In the end, this is that uniting factor that I talked about in last night's video. There is a spirit of compromise. And this guy, Henry Clay, um, I found you a younger picture of Henry Clay. Um, in, this, in this instance, Henry Clay comes up with a plan. And what he says is, Missouri hasn't done anything wrong. They've, they, they are there. They have the right numbers, so they should be admitted as a slave state. And he made a deal with Massachusetts to cut off part of Massachusetts and create a new state called Maine, which would be a free state, and so the balance would be maintained. And then he said, we need to organize this territory. So let's draw a line at the southern border of Missouri and say for the rest of the Louisiana Territory, slavery would not be permitted north of that and it would be permitted south of that. Um, when Thomas Jefferson first heard this, about this compromise, he said, this is, th this is a sign of the end of the Union. And I'll show you this document in class tomorrow. But this is a, a letter that Thomas Jefferson wrote when he heard about the Missouri Compromise. And so here's what the United States looks like after the Missouri Compromise. The balance is maintained. Missouri comes in as a slave state. Maine is created as a free state. And they draw this line on the map and say, in the future, you cannot bring slaves here. You can bring slaves here. And so in the end, what I hope you got out of this video is that you understand what the difference is between a territory and a state. It has a lot to do with their rights and power, right? And then you understand the process of a territory becoming a state 
and you should be able to use Missouri as an example and how that reveals a problem. Um, there is going to be a Google form on my website and it will simply, it'll be underneath Humpty Dumpty and it'll say Missouri. Please go there, fill that out and that is how I'm going to check in your homework tonight.